What's up, it's Josh from The Dialed In Hunter. I've got another gear video for you here today. So I drew a high country early archery mule deer tag. Um, super pumped about that, it's in Colorado. Um, so right now is the planning phase, right? Like kind of just kind of going through all my gear, seeing what I'm gonna bring, see what I'm not gonna bring. So I figured as I do that process, I'm gonna just lay everything out for y'all and show you kind of what I'm thinking of bringing for, with me on this hunt. This is gonna be a 10 day backpack hunt. Um, and it's going to be uh, first part of September, September 1 through September 10. So backpack I'm bringing with me is an XL Mountain Gear uh, K34800. Really dig this pack. I ran it all last year. Um, carries weight really, really well. It's got a full horseshoe zipper on the front, easy access to gear. The 4800 is kind of XL's like mid-sized uh, pack. It's it's a great do-it-all backpack like if you want to do a 10-day hunt you can do that if you want to do two three-day hunts you can do that you can also day hunt with it because it compresses down super uh super small and then in the event that you do get something on the ground or in the event that i get something on the ground hopefully um i'm going to be able to pack meat in between the bag and the frame and load up the actual bag with my camp so that is uh, essential in my opinion for for this type of hunting and then on the front here i've got uh, i've actually got a weapon carrier this is a bow hunt so i've never been a weapon carrier type of dude but uh ever since i started using this earlier in the year i can't imagine not having this now it just makes things so easy cam sits in there strap the bow to the pack you're done there's no like wondering where's the best spot to put the bow on the backpack which is something that i always kind of fumbled around with in the past so uh definitely gonna be on my backpack and then on the front here um or back whatever you want to call it um, I've got my Peak Designs camera clip. This is where my camera's gonna sit. Sit here, right, right here on my shoulder, easy access. I like to take photos and stuff, so uh, that thing is freaking awesome. All right, so sleeping stuff. This is my quilt, Enlightened Equipment Revelation, 20 degree quilt, it's 19 ounces, packs down super small, takes up very minimal space in the backpack, and it's down it's just super comfortable man like it's lightweight but like you get in there and that quilt and it just feels good on you so uh this is this is what i'll be bringing with me to colorado and then um sleeping pad thermarest neora x light i don't know how old this thing is man um it's 12 ounces surprisingly enough living in arizona with all the thorns that we have here i've never put a hole in this thing i've never had to repair it um so i mean it's a, it's a great pad that I, I really don't have any complaints about it there's one spot on it through the years where so it's got side baffles one of the baffles the inside the seam on the inside it must have split or something like that because now there's like a tiny little hump in one spot on the pad which i don't even notice when i'm sleeping but that's literally the only thing that's ever happened in this thing so this thing is definitely coming with me uh shelter I've talked about this thing a lot in the past. Nemo Hornet two-person tent. This is like my favorite backpacking shelter I've ever used. Um, two per it's a two-person tent, so it's absolutely perfect for one person. Like you you're laying in there, you got room on either side of you to put like a book, you know, like some clothing, whatever you want. Um, you don't feel all super claustrophobic in it. This is the newer version. The older one was coming in at three pounds on the nose. That's at least what I was getting. This one is two pounds, 11 ounces. So they shaved a bit of weight on this newer version. Uh, I put this thing through the freaking rigor, man, like all manner of weather and cross my fingers. Like I've never had it fail on me. So really, really great shelter, side entry, dual vestibules. It's, it's awesome. Here's the poles to the tent. Um, and then the stake. So I did make a modification on the stakes. So when you buy this shelter, uh, Nemo is going to send you uh, these guys right here. You're going to get these right here, these stakes right here. These work, okay? Um, I found over time though that they end up bending right here. This top half, will, this top, not half, this top portion right here will bend the head. Um, because of that, I always always upgrade the stakes. Like I'll have a few of these in here for extras, but um, 
I always upgrade to these guys here. These are the MSR Groundhogs. These things are like bulletproof. I've never bent, bent one of these things ever. And um, with all the rocks and stuff that we have here in my home state, like sometimes putting a stake in the ground is just a task. Just trying to negotiate around all the rocks underneath the underneath the, the surface. So um, really great, really great stake. Those are absolutely going to be with me. And then uh, pillow, see the summit arrows. It's like two ounces or something like that. Like I just get such a better night's sleep with an inflatable pillow. So definitely gonna be with me um, hit on food real quick this is just like an example day of food for me obviously I'm gonna have 10 of these so there's a gallon Ziploc bag um, each one of these will have a day's worth of food all right so I go uh, I got like oatmeal in here uh, I got wilderness athlete hydrant or cover um, some dark timber coffee gravity pack that's my favorite uh, fig bars RX bars, those are rad. Um, and then uh, for dinner, I'll be doing like Heather's Choice has uh, dark chocolate chili. That's one of my favorites. And then um, I've all, I also really like the African peanut stew from Heather's Choice, as well as a salmon sockeye chowder. Those are those are my favorites right there. So this is an example day of food for me. I see here water. So I'm a bladder guy. I really like running a bladder. It just makes things easy. It's easy access. I got the tube right there, the drinking tube. I'm thirsty. Boom. I'm drinking. Um, this is a three liter. Okay. And the reason I run a three liter is because I feel like it really gives me um, the opportunity to make less trips to go filter water. And what that means to me is I get more time hunting. Okay, because I like I'll use this thing for uh, for cooking. Like I'll this is where I grab my water for cooking. Now if I'm out there and I want to make like a coffee or something like that, or you know I want to eat an early dinner, this is where I'm going to get the water from. So having three liters with me allows me to do that. And then uh, it might just be like the desert kid in me. Like I always try to have like a, a good amount of water with me because that out here, like water is usually kind of scarce, but um, yeah, just like having that extra water with me. Platypus, big zip bladder. And then um, when, it is when it does come time to filter water, uh, I like a pump, there's a Catadyne Hiker Pro. Never had any issues with this thing. The only thing you're gonna have to do with this is it's just normal maintenance, is change out the cartridge on it. If you're filtering water out of some real nasty, sludgy areas, the cartridge is just gonna get clogged up, the water flow is gonna slow down, and um, you can get around that, take the cartridge out, swish it around the water, put it back in, and then you'll get through the rest of your trip, and when you get home, just change the cartridge out and you'll be, you'll be good to go. So Catadyne Hiker Pro, that's the filter uh, that I like to use. And then uh, if you eat out of a lot of bags, you spend a lot of time doing that, and you, and you don't have a long spoon, you are missing out. This is the ti uh, titanium long spoon from Tokes, uh, T-O-A-K-S, is how you spell that. These are just a game changer with eating, man. It's like really simple, but I'm telling you what, like you're not gonna have like food on your knuckles and stuff like that after like digging in like a bag to scoop dinner into your mouth. <laughs> So that this is non-negotiable for for me. <laughs> Stove, I got so I kind of put this together myself as a GSI cup with um, a Optimus Crux light stove in it. Super lightweight stove. It's a bomber stove. Uh, the only issue I've ever had with it is like when it's really windy, um, which is easily uh, I can you can deal with that really easy. Just like move behind a rock or something like that or like behind a backpack whatever to get out of the wind to cook but it works really great in here i've also got a little igniter to ignite the stove and a small fuel canister that is my stove system and then i'm a coffee guy so a lot of times i do like a pour over that requires me to bring an extra coffee cup with me just like a little ultra light um, coffee cup. I think I got it from Sportsman's Warehouse or something. Just really works great. And then uh, on the topic of food, so I, I hang my food, all right? Like this is a 20 liter dry bag from Sea to Summit. Um, 
it, the way the reason I like to hang my food is because you look forward to this all year. You know what I mean? Like the off chance that like some rodents or something get in your food. I've heard about this stuff happening. Um, I just don't want to deal with that. You know what I mean? Like I look forward to this for a long time. I want to get out there and not have to worry about like my food getting freaking stolen from me. So this is what I this is what I run inside here is a is paracord and a carabiner, and I just hang it up in a tree at the end of the night and good to go. Never had an issue. Uh, kill kit. Let's do let's go through the kill kit here. So game bags I'm running is the Argali High Country game bags, ultra light. It's got reflective material on it. The Argali logo right here is reflective. The paracord, the drawstring that cinches the top shut is also reflective. This is legit paracord too. Like you could uh, say like you bust a boot lace, you could use this to repair that, like use it as a boot lace. You could use it to repair a drop away arrow rest if if you you need to do that in the field so it's multi-purpose these are really great bags uh they're washable reusable um we used them all last year no issues and then uh the knife that i got is the argali carbon knife it's a fixed blade knife s35 vn steel holds an edge great but you can also sharpen it so the, the steel isn't so hard that you can't manipulate it at all uh, the handle's fantastic. It feels really good in the hand. It's grippy. It's got the orange on it, so you can uh, you're gonna you have a less ch less chance of losing it. Um, and yeah, it's it just does. I cut up quite a few animals with it last year, and it did really well. Then I got also some rubber gloves. I like wearing rubber gloves. Uh, latex gloves. Bring some extras with me. Uh, just in case like I cut a glove or the person that I'm with forgot to bring gloves with them. Um, always nice to have some extras. And then I also have paracord and flagging tape in this bag as well. And then the last piece of the kill kit that I have is uh, just a contractor bag. You can get these at Home Depot. Um, this is fantastic, man. Like you quarter something up you can like lay this out on the ground and put your meat on top of it and you're going to keep your meat clean if you've ever come home with dirty quarters like rocks and sticks and stuff like that it is such a pain in the butt to get that stuff cleaned off so my theory behind my like logic behind the whole thing just don't get the, the meat dirty at all like just do your best to not do that and this lends to that so this is definitely going to be with me this is really um helpful especially like if you want to bone meat out and stuff you can lace up down and bone it out right on this it's great um communication um this is uh pretty much the big brother of the garmin inreach explorer plus okay um this is the 66i i got this it's faster uh faster system the resolution's better the mapping is better but it also uh, connects with my watch, uh, which is awesome because this is usually riding in my backpack. So say I come across, I'm like, oh man, this is a great glassing spot. I wanna mark a waypoint real quick. I just marked the waypoint on my watch. I have a, this is a Garmin Phoenix 5X Plus. So it's a GPS watch. I just mark it with the watch. And then, when, then it syncs up with this and the waypoint is automatically put into this map on this device. So really slick. And obviously, like it's an inReach system, so I can send and receive text messages with this. Uh, you get the weather, you can do all sorts of things. There's a flashlight, should you need the flashlight. I don't know, I've never had to use it, but it's there. Um, got some, uh, here's charging stuff. Dark Energy Poseidon uh, charger. I can charge my camera with it. Um, I can charge the inReach with it my phone, whatever I need to do, I think is awesome. I bring this with me on all like really long, like longer hunts, like extended hunts, like a week, it's 10 days. Uh, two, three day hunts, I'm probably, not, I'm probably gonna leave this home, but on this trip, this is a 10 day hunt, so this is gonna come with me. Little cord, USB cable to go with it. And then these are extra batteries for my headlamp. So um, Black Diamond Spot, the, 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 the battery life on this is pretty good, but like, I mean, stuff happens, you know what I mean? Like, you you know, you're out there, you get something down in the dark and you're 
out in the dark for a while cutting stuff up and packing out uh you're gonna burn through batteries you know what i mean if you got like more time ahead of you i like having these extra batteries with me i've used them quite a bit in the past and um i just not gonna not gonna leave without them so definitely definitely good to have in my opinion and then uh this is a super oversized bag for my toothbrush toothpaste and a little bit of floss um having fuzzy teeth on hunts is not fun in my opinion like brush your teeth and you almost you like you feel like a new man <laughs> like so uh love really like having that stuff with me um toilet paper this is obvious um backcountry gold right here and then uh let's see here this is another little thing from dark energy that's cool um this is a it's a little flashlight but it's also like a plasma lighter so like should we get something on the ground we want to make some back straps make a fire um that sounds pretty awesome um i can light a fire with this it's really lightweight and it doesn't it takes up like no room in my backpack so it's with me and then this is a bow hunt so allen key is with me a thousand percent just in case i need to do any operating on the bow um first aid kit uh non-negotiable man like you got to have a first aid kit on backpack a first aid kit on backpack hunts day hunts wherever you're going i i mean you, you, this needs to be with you it's just uh it's just the right thing to do for yourself right thing to do for your family um it could save your life so um this is just from adventure medical kit they sell all different sizes sizes of these i put ibuprofen in here uh so maybe some tums and then there's some other stuff in there like gauze and stuff and um, antiseptic uh, just, in, just in case you cut yourself and stuff. So really, really uh, recommend doing that. You can make your own first aid kit too, like whatever it is, like just make sure you have a first aid kit with you. Um, Luco tape, this is this stuff is killer, man. Uh, Multi-purpose, I use this mostly for my feet. Uh, so I'll tape up my feet, especially going into really steep country. Um, you're just working more man like your feet are working more against your boots and stuff and uh like last year i was in utah started getting some heel bite i threw this stuff on there and i hunted the next six days with no issues at all in really steep country so um and then we repaired a monopod with this stuff it's uh pretty pretty awesome strong uh adhesive stuff so um that's always with me um face paint i'm a face paint guy make fun of me go ahead um i used to wear masks i tried wearing the masks uh in the past but i just can't, i can't feel the anchor point on my face when i'm bow hunting so the the face paint allows me to do that um and i just feel more confident when i'm shooting and stuff so always have face paint with me um extra release for uh, my bow i've never had to use it but you know, uh, I'd rather have it than not have it. You know, be back there and and uh, kind of get your. If you're, I've broken a release before on a, on a hunt, so um, having an extra one would have been awesome. So this is always with me. Um, trekking poles. So I'll be using these on the way in. Uh, Hundred percent. Bow's gonna be strapped to my pack, and I'll be using these to negotiate my way in there. Um, these are knee savers, man. They're leg savers uh really really helpful when you get something on the ground and you have a lot of weight on your back i cannot tell you how many times these have saved me from taking nasty spills and ever since the first time i've used trekking poles i'm like i, I need to have trekking poles so these are going to be with me um once they get into camp these are just going to go in my backpack and i probably won't use them again until we either shoot something or we're packing out back to the truck so. And these are uh, black diamond, uh, what are these? The FLZ, Z, something like that. Distant carbon FLZ, that's the that's what type of trekking poles these are. They're black diamond. Um, let's talk about optics a bit. So high country mule deer hunt, I'm gonna be doing a lot of glassing from a tripod. My tripod is right there. It's a Slick Pro 3, I think is the one it is. The head on it is a Saray VA5. I love, absolutely love that head. It's super smooth. 
Um, the machining on it is very impressive. Like just like I have a, an extra tripod plate right here. Like putting a tripod plate into that head, you will understand like this thing was made with precision. So super high quality head, love that thing. Um, bino adapter right here. Um, and uh, I've got another plate right here. So I'll be glassing for my binos with this plate. And then I've got another plate right here that's on my spine scope. Makes it super easy for, um, if I spot something with my binos, um, I just pop that plate off, throw this on there, and I'm getting like a zoomed in picture or whatever I'm looking at. So um, Vortex 65 millimeter razor. Uh, it's a little bigger than I've brought in the past. I used to bring a 50 millimeter spine scope with me, um, which did okay, but like, High country mule deer hunting, man, it's just like really big country. So like having something that really can reach out there and touch further is really important in my opinion. So this is this is what's coming with me. And then my binos. So this is um, FHF Bino Harness. I love this bino pack. It's super uh, small, uh, low profile. And then, um, Binos are gonna be Vortex Razor UHDs, 10 by 42s. Just got these earlier this year. These have been an absolute pleasure to look through. The quality is incredible. Color, like just colors are more vibrant and stuff. It, it's super clear, wide field of view. I could look through them all day long. And then uh, my rangefinder is a Vortex Razor HD 4000. Um, this thing is really rad, it's super fast. Um, and the glass is great too. Like when I'm stalking in on something, um, I'll have my rangefinder in my hand, not just to range something, to like to range an animal or a tree or whatever, um, but also I use it to glass as I'm stalking in on something. So you kill two birds with one stone instead of like using your binos to glass ahead of you and then put those down and then grab your rangefinder. I like having a range for the rangefinder because it's a, it's smaller than the binos. It's easier to, to disp to get rid of than uh, like range finding binoculars are. Um, and um, you know, it's just, you know, I can scan out ahead of me and kind of see like, oh, there's an antler. And then I could range like right away instead of having to make two movements to grab like binos and a rangefinder. So pretty cool. my optics clothing uh start at footwear um running first light mercury socks and then these are actually from vortex these came out um earlier in the year there's their trekker lights i believe um this is a super comfortable socks the merino blend i used it through uh spring bear season and um, i was pretty impressed you know like it was really comfortable um, 10 days I'm probably gonna this is probably what I'll bring with me and I'll alternate each day like I'll wear one and then while I'm gone I'll have another one hanging up in my tent um, and then I'll do the opposite the next day basically so that's my socks boots crispy Colorado's ran these all last year um, and they did they did great man they're comfortable i did change the insole on them it's a sole performance thick insole it's a cork insole it takes up quite a bit of room in the boot and uh yeah i've got about a year of use on them and as like as you can see like the tread is still pretty good on them and um yeah they they did they did really well they, they're they're stiffer than what i'm used to but in that steep terrain um that really came in handy i was glad i had that extra support all right, clothing. Down below, we will be wearing the First Light Corrugate Guides, the guide pants. Um, also have the Wick underwear on as well. Those things are ridiculously comfortable. And um, I, I, this is, I really like these pants, man. Like, um, I've never had any issues with them. They're super durable and you could, I've said this before, but you could do karate in these things. They're like, they're, they have like, they're stretchy and stuff. So really nice pant. Um, up top, doing the first light wick, hooded wick. And then the uh, on top of that, I'll run the hooded kiln. I like having a hood, especially when it's warmer out, just to protect like the back of my neck from the sun and stuff. I have a hood on most of the time when I'm out there. Um, so yeah, that's just me. 
Um, rain gear, first light vapor storm light jacket. I've run this thing for years. It's uh, it's a great piece of gear. Um, most of these rainstorms are they're fairly short, but there is absolutely going to be rainstorms. Like in the high country, like it's gonna thunderstorm. So just plan on getting wet a bit. Um, so that's my rain jacket. And then on top of that, I'm doing down below, uh, boundary storm tight rain pants from first light as well. And then my installation is going to be, uh, the new, um, Uncompadre 2.0. I was a massive fan, still am massive fan of the original Uncompadre jacket. Um, this is, you know, the improved version of it. I haven't got a chance to test this out yet, but if it's anything, like it's uh, the first version, I'm sure I'm gonna be pleasantly surprised. So that's what I'm bringing, man. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please drop them down below. I wanna hear about your adventures coming up. Drop those down below too if you drew a sweet tag. I'd love to hear like what you have coming up. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe out there.